A warm welcome to Vision This Week on Channels Television. I'm Bukola Joe Oketumi, and we're reaching you from the departure hall of the Muritala Mohamed Airport 2 in Lagos. An airport is often described as the place where planes can land or take off. The section between planes and terminals are called gates. When passengers travel through the airport, the expectation is quick facilitation and comfort. Where that is lacking, then there is a problem. And it's often said that the state of a nation's international terminals is a major pointer to the state of things in that country. On the program, our focus is how technology can keep changing the face of airport operations and processes. Our background report is next. The International Air Transport Association says its survey shows clearly that passengers want to use biometric identification if it expedites travel processes and wants to spend less time queuing. This is from its 2021 Global Passenger Survey. The report also states that before traffic ramps up, there is a window of opportunity to ensure a smooth return to travel post-pandemic and deliver long-term efficiency improvements for passengers, airlines, airports and governments. So if the goal is to deliver long-term improvements for passengers, Nigeria may have to take a cue from this report as issues of corruption plagues Nigeria's premier international airport in Lagos. A session at the airport didn't start today. So, I mean, uh, it's just that COVID is giving them another opportunity to extort. So what I tell my members, that's why I said this is not the time for anybody to say, I don't need a travel agent. Because what I tell my client, I had a group of visitors coming from America. You know what I told them? I said, see, this is your right. This is the things you need to do. I got them everything that they need to have. And I said, you, are, you have all your co complete documents. Do not allow anybody. These are your rights. So I made them understand their rights. So even when they came and there were opportunities for them to be escorted, they spoke with so much boldness because I had told them what their right is. So by the time they finished and came out of uh, immigration, they called me and they were like, the information I gave them was very useful. And that was how they were able to scale through uh, immigration. Here at this meeting, how the airport would overcome this challenge is the center of discussions. Henceforth, all violations, any and all violations recorded or caught, fan will escalate, not necessarily within the airport anymore. We will write to the department at the airport, we will write to the agency or companies on headquarters to inform them, and the violator will lose his ODC. The ODC is on the on duty card, which means you lose your access card into the terminal. And we agreed it will be permanent. While the federal government owned airports battle for sanity, the Muritala Mohamed Airport 2 in Lagos, which is the first build operate and transfer terminal, appears organized. What exactly is responsible for this? We have a structure in place right from the top all the way to the bottom. And the structure we have is to ensure that everybody is actually doing their job based on you know, various units. We have different supervisors. We have different managers in charge of different units. When you think of an airport, people just think of a space where you can just come in, get on a flight and leave. But an airport really is a commercial space where we have other activities here. And just how much is technology driving the operations here? Every part of our business has one sort way or the other that is driving it. Like in our cargo system, we have what we call cargo management system, which we use in processing cargo seamlessly. For passengers' facilitations, for the airlines, we have what we call register system, which helps the airline to process passengers right from the check-in desk onto when they enter aircrafts. We have the one we call bag 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 Baguera. Baguera is used in scanning even hand luggage and baggage before they enter aircraft finally. And we also have a, a very world-class conveyor system, which presently we're even upgrading. Perhaps the federal government-owned airports could borrow a leave for operations at this private terminal. Away from this, fingers are also pointing in the way of multiple agencies operating at the international terminals as the reason for the high level of corruption. At this meeting, the managing director of the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, 
states its case. Most of our challenges are with the armed agencies. The ones that are not armed are easier to control, to listen and obey the standard and recommended practices. Two of them at access points to enter the Hajj and Cargo Terminal. Officers of the Nigerian Customs refused to come down and be screened. And when they were, when our personnel, the aviation security insisted, they came down and assaulted aviation personnel. That is fun stuff. I believe what is also adding to this is our problem of having too many agencies. When we have 15, 10 agencies doing the same thing, I think it also opens the door for violations. It opens the door for corruptions. We certainly cannot continue to condone others of Meanwhile, the House of Representatives said it's spearheading a major reform of the nation's international airports in support of the federal government's Ease of Doing Business initiative that would usher in a single security screening point for arriving and departing passengers at the nation's international airports. The House of Representatives is not alone in spearheading this major reform of a single security outfit at the international airport. An industry pressure group, the Aviation Roundtable, is on the same page and they're asking that the outfit should take the picture of what is obtainable in the United States known as the Transport Security Administration. The President of Aviation Roundtable, Mr. Gwengalowu, is our guest. Single security approach that was spoken about by the National Assembly, particularly the House of Representatives under the Speaker, uh, could be likened to what is happening in the U.S., uh, Transportation Security Administration. This agency is an, is, is an admin agency that coordinates not only FAN, that we regard to here as FAN, our airport authorities, that administrates all security agencies that operate at the airport. For instance, immigration, um, narcotics, uh, the police, and you have all forms of security agencies that are involved with public facing, facing members of the public. Who exactly is the boss? Many times here at the airport we have a military men and soldiers and fine security having clashes over one security measure or the other. The essence of security, single security administration here is to harmonize all these responsibilities under a single agency. And to harmonize, all you need to do is administration using technology, okay? Somebody is already being targeted on political challenges. Somebody is targeted on drug accusation. Somebody is targeted on currency manipulation. Somebody is targeted for whatever crime. These agencies are together under what you call transportation security administration. And with the help of technology, it's just a finger on the machine. Your name comes out, your passport comes out, that guy is fingered out, and that guy is taken to the responsible authority. So essentially, immigration will not be doing the job of customs. Customs will not be doing the job of narcotics. That, that is the beauty of international airports of the world, where once you pass the ticket checking point, you're checking by the airline, the next phase you are seeing is the security administration, where machineries are there to tell him who you are. So, so I, I really commend um, the effort of our Congress, especially um, um, House of Rep, and, and I hope they will draw this to a very good conclusion, make sure it happens. The Vice President tried it one time. He came to the airport and dislodged all the nurses, the checkpoints that are money-making checkpoints.
it's not good for the image of this country. But the mentality of you discharging your service to me and expect me to say thank you right and then, you have, you've not done me any, say, any favor. You are fulfilling the essence of your occupying that seat. I think that, that Nigerians have to appreciate that any of us that is privileged to occupy an office, you are in that office to discharge a duty. And particularly security agency, there is the oath of the office they swear to. You want to discharge that service to the best of your ability. Flight booking and ticketing activities are in top gear at the terminal building of the Anambra State International Passenger and Cargo Airport, Umweri. One of the major infrastructure projects recently commissioned by the outgoing administration of Governor Willy Obiano. The flight from Lagos was meant to land by 1.30 p.m. and take off by 4 p.m with Abuja-bound passengers as they wait. A popular Nollywood actor notes the importance of the airport. This airport further opens the door by air travel to citizens of Nigeria and outside Nigeria for movement within Southeast Anambra State specifically to the outside world. It will bring a lot of commercial activities. It will open up businesses. It will also bring a lot of employment Looking around the airport, one can see that it is international. I understand that it's category 9. That is one of the biggest categories you can give to airports all over the world. By citing this project in our community, Umweri, and then opening it last time and making the first commercial flights to land in Umweri today. So you can see the kind of uh, thing the Anambra people are going to benefit from this airport because God has done a lot for our people. To God be the glory. At 2.45 p.m., the aircraft with 38 passengers touches down at the Anambra State International Passenger and Cargo Airport and is welcomed with a shower. The passengers disembark and are received by the Deputy Governor-elect, Dr. Oyeka Ibezim. Traveling to Anambra through uh, Owere, through Asaba, through Enugu, they provided us with the services that time. Now that there is a new airport, an international airport, here in Anambra, we are happy to land in Anambra. The air, air peace management said they are going to increase the flights, increase the routes. So we believe that after today, this airport will be the most busiest airport in Nigeria. For the State Commissioner for Works, the time frame for the delivery of the airport is noteworthy. His Excellency has succeeded in giving Anambra State a very wonderful Christmas package. Instead of traveling to the nearby airports, with 20-25 minutes we are in this airport, I think it's the best the best Christmas gift His Excellency has given to Ndianambra. The second aircraft from Abuja touches down, and for this passenger, it's an exciting feeling. Later on, 35 passengers heading for Abuja leave through the departure point to board the airport. No doubt, Anambra State International Passenger and Cargo Airport, Umweri, has come alive, and daily flights to four states, at least, are expected. The addition of Nigeria to its travel red list by the United Kingdom is not going down with many. This time, Nigeria's High Commissioner to that country, Ambassador Sharafa Ishola, has also spoken out against the restrictions by his host nation. His comments align with that of the United Nations Secretary General, who has raised concerns over measures imposed by various countries against African nations. The position of Nigeria is to align with the position of UN Secretary General uh, that has classified the travel ban 
on Nigeria and some other African countries as travel apartheid. And uh, Nigeria aligns absolutely with that because what we're talking about, like I said, is not endemic. If, if uh, the Omicron variant is endemic, that means it's peculiar to, to a few countries, then you can understand that. But as of today, the official confirmation of Omicron patients in Nigeria, we just have three. And all over the world, we have so many countries that even have, uh, a, you know, 200, 300, 400 percent over that of Nigeria. Yet, they are not included in the ban list. That's number one. Number two is the fact that uh, South Africa happened to be the first country that will bring the attention of the world to the existence of Omicron. And we must salute their efforts. Perhaps it did not even emanate from South Africa because, I mean, we in Africa, we appreciate the fact that uh, this is a pandemic uh, and any issue on these variants, from the first one to the second one to the third one, and uh, now the fourth one, must be shared with others in the world. It's an anger of 200 million people. Throughout the length and breadth of Nigeria, even the opposition, nobody has welcomed or supported the decision. And that's why we are, uh, in, we are please calling on uh, uh, United, uh, United uh, uh, Kingdom to please take it, look and review. Because one thing of our leadership is the ability to reverse issues based on error. Uh, it's never, it doesn't portray you as a weak person. It just give, it makes you a good leader who has the courage to change decision with more facts. Over 160 aircraft were on display, including commercial, military, and private jets. Boeing, Airbus, Bombardier, and others all showed off their latest and greatest. We have been through two tough years, but what we see now happening is, is a really good science for recovery. What we can do to help uh, airlines and operators with things around shortening the, 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 the flight times or you know, uh, optimization of, of routes, predictability of their maintenance and, and how can they minimize downtime because it's, it's extremely important today for airlines to maximize their capacity, use their fleet, recover the, the, the losses that they have incurred. Exhibitors said while the COVID-19 pandemic has severely impacted the aviation industry, it has shaped the new trend of the industry. For example, freight transport has become a new opportunity as the demand for passenger air travel decreased. It's the time for the industry to once again focus on the future trends in the aviation industry and digitalization, for example, and sustainability are topics that are gaining importance also now as we emerge from the crisis. And it will be very important for airlines to adopt and embark on, on these topics at an early stage. It is the world's largest aviation event since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, with contracts exceeding the pre-pandemic edition in 2019 by about 27 billion US dollars. Industry insiders believe that the success of the Dubai Air Show indicates the beginning of a slow recovery of the global aviation industry. Air cargo is indeed a trade facilitator that contributes to global economic development and creates millions of jobs. Air cargo transports over $6 trillion worth of goods, accounting for approximately 35% of world trade by value. Figures from the International Air Transport Association for September 2021 showed global demand measured in cargo ton kilometers was up 9.1% compared to September 2019, compared to pre-COVID levels. There is a benefit from supply chain congestion as manufacturers turn to air transport for speed, 
but severe capacity constraints continue to limit the ability of air cargo to absorb extra demand. For African Airlines, international cargo volumes increased by 34.6% in September, the largest increase of all regions for the ninth consecutive month. The COVID-19 has really lowered the passenger figure and also have an increase globally on the cargo figure. Uh, actually, the IATA is projecting the $175 billion in terms of revenue for cargo. But unfortunately, that is not the case in Nigeria. What we have in Nigeria, or what we are having in Nigeria presently is slight increase, which is not that sustainable due to so many factors. While Africa benefits largely, Nigeria benefits minimally as challenges back home affect cargo movements, especially the inadequate export capacity. What we have observed now is that the duty payments and the exchange rate as well is affecting our clients. One, they have difficulty in remitting funds, you know, when they buy spare parts, you know, tools, chemicals, raw materials that they pay in USD, they are beginning to have difficulty in paying for them because of the exchange rate, one, and then ease of procuring these forex. Even when they go to the banks, it takes time to be able to get their allocation. So that's the only one part. As African Airlines recorded a 62.2% decline in passenger traffic demand despite a moderate improvement globally. The minimal global surge was driven by recovery in domestic markets, in particular China, where some travel curbs were lifted following the COVID-19 outbreaks in August. IATA's Director General, Willie Walsh, said September performance was a positive development. We're certainly on the path to recovery. Uh, the reopening of the U.S., the announcement that the U.S. would open to European travelers, that, that's been a great boost. You know, we were disappointed earlier in the year that uh, it didn't happen. Uh, it was a very pleasant surprise when it was announced that uh, the U.S. would open for vaccinated uh, travelers in uh, November. Uh, we still forecast losses in the industry in 2022. Uh, but the losses will have significantly reduced to about 12 billion US dollars. While border closures and quarantine mandates seem to be giving way with the opening of the UK-US border, IATA is also warning that flights to Nigeria may be hampered because of the $208 million blocked fund of foreign airlines that operate in the country. Essentially, what it means is that international airlines will have their funds tied up in a central bank for as long as uh, there's a paucity of foreign exchange to service those obligations. Um, the, the impact to a large extent is probably uh, a situation where you have a lot of international airlines uh, who will be reluctant to come into Nigeria, realizing that they will not be able to repatriate their funds from the sales of their airline tickets. The problem with connectivity will get a bit, a bit more accentuated if you would have one or two other airlines, international airlines that is, discontinued service to Nigeria because of all these uh, issues of blocked funds. Uh, besides that, um, it's a major strain and stress on the foreign reserve if we're not earning enough to be able to support uh, the obligations by international parties to which we've uh, signed bilaterals or multilaterals. Globally, about $1 billion in airline funds is blocked by 20 countries worldwide, and of this, about $700 million is tied up in 11 African countries, including Nigeria. This is where the program comes to a close. Thank you so much for staying with us. I'm Bukola Joe Okitsumbi. See you next time.